The Six Seas is What I Have For You and Diana Ross and the Supremes singing two songs, Reflections and The Lady Is The Tramp and being introduced by Sammy Davis Jr. Now, <coughs> Sammy Davis Jr. is very, very famous because Davis had, you know, a famous tap dancer, singer, theatrical person, a person who starred in films. That's the guy who just introduces them before they come on. And, you know, he began his career at the age of three with his father, Sammy Davis Sr. And the Will Mason Trio, way, 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 way back before a lot of you would even know how far way back is. But Davis' popularity helped break the race barrier in his time of the segregated entertainment industry. He did, however, have a complex relationship with the black community and drew cr criticism after publicity, publicly sorry, supporting President Richard Nixon in 72. One day on a golf course with Jack Benny, he was asked what was his handicap. Handicap, he asked, talk about handicap. I'm a one-eyed Negro who's Jewish. This was to become his signature comment, recounted in his autobiography and in many articles. And then when we go to the Supremes, the greatest girl group is what you're going to see in its time ever had its origins in the 50s in Detroit's Brewer Projects. At the beginning, the girls formed a quartet and named themselves the Primettes. Primettes, sorry, achieved mild success locally and recorded a single for the Lupine record label. They ended up being a trio in 1960, shortly after they were signed by Detroit-based Motown, a record company founded by Barry Gordy. At Gordy's request, the trio formed the Florence Ballard, Mary Wilson and Diana Ross trio that became the Supremes. Now today's songs is The Lady is a Tramp and Reflections. Reflections probably is one of the more known songs that they had done and it was a song recorded by the Supremes for the Motown label and it was the first Supremes record credited to Diana Ross and the Supremes themselves and amongst their last hit singles to be written and produced by Holland Dozier. The Lady is a Tramp will follow. You'll see the mixture how they blend it together. It's a show tune from 1937 Rogers and Hart musical Babes in Arms in which it was introduced by former child star Mitzi Green. The song is a spoof of New York high society and its strict etiquette. The first line of the verse is, I get too hungry for dinner at eight, is the start of what's to come. But let's get back into today's video. We're going back to the 60s and we're going to enjoy and reminisce and have some fun. Take it away, Sammy Davis Jr. There is no lyrics to this and breakdown of the lyrics. It's just a fun video to reflect, unwind and enjoy. After that summary of an introduction, I hope you will. Yeah, that sound can only mean one thing. The hottest group in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diana Ross and the Supremes. Yeah. Shh. Through the hollow of my 
tears I see a dream that's lost From the hurt that you have caused Everywhere I turn up Seems like everything I see Social circle spins too fast for me. I'm busy. Got a job. Go home, Bohemia is the place to be. to say the audience are very where sorry past tense very very disciplined i mean they all sat and i was looking at the audience as well as enjoying that memory and they're so rigid and not a head was moving or a body swaying and then they erupted into that applause which is very nice 
was all very disciplined and elegant and sophisticated back then, wasn't it? That you went along in your best attire and you just... I don't know if I could have done that, but anyway, congratulations Diana Ross and Supremes and thank you for the memory. What does it say just before I leave about the Supremes? This is what I want to finish up. In spite of the support of Motown writers and producers such as Smokey Robinson and Gordy himself, the group spent a few years recording songs that disappeared into oblivion as soon as they were released. During those early years, it was generally accepted that Flo Ballard had the strongest, more soulful voice to lead the group. But Gordy decided that Diana Ross had a more commercial sound and she became the lead singer in most of their recordings. However, his enthusiasm was not initially shared by other producers and musicians who found Ross's voice too high pitched and nasal. In late 1963, the Supremes were turned over to the in-house production team formed by Lamont Dozier and brothers Brian Holland and Eddie Holland. From the very beginning of the collaboration worked like magic when their first release, When the Love Lights Start Shining Through His Eyes, became a top 40 hit nationwide, providing the first hint of the girl's potential. So there you go, they never looked back. And then when Diana Ross did split from the group, I believe many, many years later, Mary in the group, um, Holland, continued with the group but solo with herself just calling herself the supremes two backup singers and she she fronted it so they all got their turn in a way but diana ross reigns supreme i suppose it's just how it is but look back in the 60s the supremes ran supreme and that was their first little synopsis of what i'll give you during the year they'll be back for sure don't forget to comment like and subscribe take care for now